What is up guys? Welcome to episode two of the training session edition. I am training legs today and this is part of a push-pull leg split. So the volume that I'm working at for this session is reflective of that setup. Now for those of you that haven't watched the video so far, please go back, watch them and understand how the volume will vary depending on the split choice that you're using because the split choice you're using will have different frequencies and then your volume will adjust based on your frequency. So if you haven't watched any of the content, watch the first two videos. Just, I advise, the, the videos are really interlinked as a series. And so if you watch them from the start to the finish, you're going to understand the things I'm talking about way more. Like there's gonna be, hopefully, no missing things as to what I'm trying to cover. If you just jump into one video, it's probably gonna leave you with a lot of questions that I promise you are answered in all of the, the previous videos that we've done. Uh, it's been very much designed in a way to string things together and introduce more concepts and ideas as we've gone. Uh, just because I, I can't overload you with everything at once because this has been like 22 years of training knowledge that I've developed that I'm then putting together and giving to you. Um, and I talk about a lot, that a lot in the, the last Push Pull Legs video as a whole that I put up. So, legs today. I like to start my leg sessions with a hamstring curl. That's just my preference. That's not an absolute must whatsoever. But I find that getting my hamstrings warm, getting my knees warm, and doing that prior to my compound movements generally feels good. It's one of the things actually that um, I learned from John Meadows and he was a big advocate of that. And I, I really, for those of you that train your legs hard and you're, you're strong on your compound movements, you'll know that doing that leg work, that hamstring curl work prior to them feels good. Yes, you could do the leg extension before, but I found that most people have pretty beat up knees from training years. And as a result, the leg extension as the very first thing isn't always the most comfortable thing. It might be for you and that again is fine. There is huge variability when it comes to the layout of these sessions. And I'm gonna post on my Instagram lots of different example layouts for you to give you the options available to you so then you can then try them and come to what you think feels the best for you because we're all very different. So for some of you, you might just wanna bash out your compound movements first, because that again, feels the best. And there's certainly periods where I've done that, where my body's been feeling great, and I've been excited to come in here, and I think, do you know what, the very first thing I wanna do is just attack my compound movement, because that's how I feel. And if that's how you feel, great, have at it. But for me today, and for the large majority of my leg training, I'm a little bit tired, because I'm always a little bit tired, my body's a little bit beat up, and I know that if I do my hamstring curls first, by the time I finish my hamstring curls, I'm then pretty much ready to do whatever else I've got to do for the rest of the session. So I'm going to do single leg standing hamstring curl. I'm going to get warm in my usual fashion. I'm going to work my way down through the reps as I do more weight. And then I'm going to do two work sets here. And with the rep ranges for these, these are not set in stone in the sense of a load and a back up set. Because when I'm warming up, some days it might feel great. And when that happens, yeah, I'll probably go heavier on my first set. But equally, some days it might not. And I won't necessarily do my heavy set first. And this is where, again, in, the, in one of the previous videos, the upper low video, I said that um, the idea of the load and the back off set isn't set in stone. Because it might be what's essentially a back off set first, that lighter weight first. But as always, always to failure. So I'm gonna warm up, I'm gonna see how things feel, and I'm gonna decide which rep range I'm gonna work in. But regardless, I know, obviously right now I'm, I'm a lot weaker than I was at, at peak strength because it's not my goal anymore. Um, but I, when I was at peak strength, I knew what my high rep numbers were to progress, and I knew what my heavy numbers were to progress. So regardless of which one I chose, I'm still looking to progress my lift. Um, and that's also an important thing to note, guys. So as a smaller side guys, for those of you um, that might watch this, that do jiu-jitsu, 
from doing jiu-jitsu, I have worked out, because I, I didn't want to put so kind of any comments about strength work in jiu-jitsu until I'd done enough jiu-jitsu and put in enough roles against people and against good people as well to come to any kind of ideas of what you do and don't need to do for strength work. One thing that I'm absolutely sure of is that if you have really, really fucking strong hamstrings, it's, it's helpful. It's really helpful. Like you can get yourself out, and obviously strong glutes as well. Having strong glutes to being able to powerfully hip escape is super important, but strong hamstrings as well. You can do a lot with super strong hammies. Like it makes it a very big difference and you're gonna be a much bigger pain in the ass in certain situations if your hamstrings are really strong. So focus on getting them super strong. So just like as a continuation from that last thing, like I still haven't put out any um, like absolute ideas on my thoughts to strength training in jiu-jitsu because I'm still not there yet with my ideas as a whole. Like, like I said, I've, I've been lifting weights for 22 years. I understand lifting weights inside and out. I understand getting strong and building muscle inside and out. But so much so, and understanding that it's so nuanced that it takes time to come to kind of some ideas when they're sport specific. You can't just, I don't believe, immediately say, well, you should do this. Like, I didn't want to put anything out there until I'm a lot further along the line with things. And actually I'm doing some half decent jiu-jitsu and then can say positively, yeah, this, this is probably gonna be a, a better way to approach things. I'm just not there with it yet. Um, and I refuse to put out ideas that I don't, that I can't fully stand behind. Like, in all the years of putting out content, my approaches and my ideas have never changed. Ever. Like, I've never had to backtrack. On, have I ever had to backtrack on a training idea? No, never. I, I, I can't think of a single thing. Yes, definitely some drug stuff, and, and of course, some nutrition stuff, because we just, we've, I've learned more. Um, there's, there's, there's aspects of things that I've backtracked in many ways, but never anything on training. Um, and I think it's because I think about training more than anything else, way more. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm not there with it. But I, and I know that you guys are asking for content on it. And obviously I have some ideas that I'm happy to share, but nothing conclusive yet, but it will come. Um, give, me, give me a bit more time to be really thinking and working some things out. And I learn a lot from, from Corin too. So like Corin's on her first comp. When, and she obviously, she did fantastically well. She's got her second comp coming up. Once Corin has 10 competitions under her belt, 20 competitions under her belt, which is only gonna take her six months to do 20 comps. And once she's competed internationally, like Europeans and worlds and against some of the best, which again, will only be six months time. I can then formulate ideas really, really fast once that happens, because I then am honing in on how subjectively and emotionally detached, how to make someone else that I'm seeing improve, get better as quick as I can help them. Um, I find that for me the biggest learning experience. I, and that's when I know I'm about to share stuff even more. Is um, Corinne's basically the guinea pig. And then we work out how to do things the most efficient way. Um, we can measure it in the rate of progress. And then, then we can come to our some ideas. And that's what we did when we were bodybuilding basically. Um, it worked really well. So yeah, same thing's coming at you with Jiu Jitsu too. That's warm-up stuff, as is you saw, I just did one rep on my last warm-up. Now, from a resistance profile perspective, this piece in particular is very hard to get short, very. Again, that's why I'm starting with it, um, because I'm only gonna have that oomph to get that fully shortened position. And to be honest, when I actually go heavy on this, I struggle actually to even get it fully short. I get it as short as I can. So some of these reps might look like they're a little bit off of full contraction. Um, and that's because as well, when you're, when you're in the standing position, it doesn't quite look like you're hitting full contraction unless you kind of lent forward 
and then you're able to get that slight further um, range of motion. Um, I'm getting it to a point that I'm happy with, um, where that feels good. So if that range looks a little short, just understand that when you do this, try to find something that feels good for you. Um, so, warming up, that felt good. So I'm gonna do like a five repper first as my first set and then I'll come down. Like if, if that didn't feel okay, I'd start a bit lighter as my first set and then I'd do a heavier one second, but I'm happy with that, that feels okay. Now in terms of volume, um, like I said, just gonna be two sets here, but if I do the first set and it feels fucking great, then that's where I'll then do another set that's slightly heavier again. And for those of you that have watched my content before, you'll hear that I use that phrase, when it's there, take it, in the sense that if it's safe to do something even heavier again, even if it's only a double and a treble, if it's safe, I like to take it. Because the more I can expose myself to something that's even heavier, it gets me even used to the that, that five rep set that I'm gonna start with. And then before I know it, that five rep set starts to feel light. And all of a sudden, like when I'm creeping up the load, like I'm able to go five reps to six reps and also make that slight bump in load increase by adding a biscuit. And that exposure to something even heavier allows you to do that faster. Um, but it's really important to only do it on days that if you feel good, okay? Because you do not wanna take those risks just for the sake of it, because if, if you're getting feedback that doesn't give you the green light and you do it and you get injured, you then can't lift. So it's really, really stupid. Um, so only ever doing those on days where things feel amazing is wise. know that I didn't get short. That one I could feel was considerably less than the others, but that's fine. That was full failure in that I couldn't complete the round. have felt great so I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna get shoot for two reps on this one which um, I don't hugely advise a lot of the time to do two rep hamstring curls but for me I know that it's safe for me to do that I do that a lot I've never got hurt doing it and also my goal at the moment is to have a really freaky strong leg curl like really strong and be able to be able to just produce as much force in that curl position as possible. Again, that second one was like near impossible to get short. Third set, um, I've now backed back off. So I did like a five or a six repper, then a two repper, and I've come back down to what will be like a 10 to 12 repper. Um, and then for a push ball exit layout split, I'm happy for those three rep range parameters. For those of you that are solely focused on building muscle, um, if you do the slightly heavier set, maybe only do as a three. But like I said, that set is not essential whatsoever focusing on that initial six to ten and then like 12 to 20 is a, a perfectly fine approach to things and then on the days that feel good on exercises that you feel safe if you want to have a crack at a heavy treble then go for it
So guys, hamstring curls done. Uh, for my quad compound at the moment, I like to do dead stop leg presses. I like to take the range fairly deep at the moment, control the eccentric well, dead stop in the bottom, and then power back out. Um, this has been a, a really safe way for me to actually lift really heavy in terms of the rep range on the leg press because it, um, like I said in the kind of the previous video and I said on the hamstring curl that for me right now my goal is absolute strength um, just to try to be as strong for what I'm doing as possible so with this don't go into the heavy heavy rep ranges like I am stick in the rep ranges that are the most suitable for you so it's going to get warm With this, you'll see that I don't waste any, any energy warming up. My warm ups on these are probably lower than what most people would need to do. Um, make sure that you're ready for your work set. Don't be, so even if you're training with a training partner and your warm ups are slightly different to them, warm up how you need to warm up and they'll warm up how they need to warm up. Um, so like for me, on that first set, I think I only did like a couple reps, like four reps, and the last one, I think it was only one rep. Um, so it may have only been two reps and one rep. It's really low. Like for this again, it'll just be one rep. It's, it's, it's all I need to do to get warm. Um, like once I've done my first piece, I don't need to waste energy. Uh, that's only ever bit me once when it comes to injury. And you, know, you will avoid injury a lot more so by doing what's essentially feeder sets, but then you'll take away dramatically from your working sets. And to create the most amount of mechanical tension, we need to be taking weights to absolute failure with the maximum amount of load to recruit the maximum amount of muscle fibers. So guys, this is gonna be a five rep set. Um, I've just been biscuiting my progressions to so just like 0.5 jumps. Um, just cause this is right at the upper end. And for me now, like I had a huge drop off in strength and then now I'm trying to claw some progressions back again. But like I'm, I'm on legit TRT. Like I said in my previous video, I don't even take my 125 test a week. It gets taken every 10 days because I don't do my shots when I should because I don't like doing them anymore. Um, so, and then I'm doing martial arts every single day. Um, so recovery for me to lift weights is, is hard. Um, and also like I'm a lot more fatigued coming into sessions because of the amount of martial arts that we're doing. So like these sessions are, are very hard to be as up for it as I previously was because they don't serve the same purpose anymore. But nonetheless, on these heavy sets where I want to take from it what I want, I'm still gonna get fucking up for them because um, that's the only way I know how to lift weights. I'm uh, I'm not as strong as James, so for me to lift weights that are half decent, I have to really fucking give it something in my head. So. <laughs> Oh, 
So guys, for this set, I'm, I'm going up again. Um, please be super careful with the rep ranges you work in, please. Like a three rep leg press, I, I, would, I don't have anyone I've ever coached do that, okay? Um, I know for me it's okay. Like, obviously I don't know, no. This is certainly an element of risk. Um, part of me slightly enjoys that risk as well. It just, it's just the, it's the way I've always trained. I walk on that side of risk. But at the moment with the dead stop, this feels okay for me. And it's the safest way for me to do extremely heavy compound loading. Um, this is actually safer for me than a three rep squat, surprisingly, uh, because with that I pick up little quad injuries. And, and my goal is absolute maximal peak strength. Um, we will have different goals. My, your goal will not be the same as mine at the moment. Like, the next thing that I compete in is a Jiu Jitsu competition. For that I want to be as strong as I possibly can be. So that's why I'm lifting like I am. Um, so work in the rep ranges that are safe for you, please. For those of you that are on YouTube, you will not be used to my music choices yet. And I'm probably not gonna expose you to them just yet. Uh, Can you hear it? Yeah, don't respect that. It's not worth it. It's not See, worth it. Corey was just like, don't tell them what that is. <laughs> Some things are best left on session. Oh shit, I turned it off. One thing I can be sure of. No one would ever in a million years get what guess what song it is. No. Unless you happen to be in Murrayfield in February. Or your Hamish Watson. <laughs> or your Hamish Watson. <laughs> That's one Again, real low energy output on my warm ups. Um, there was just one rep on six plates, one rep on seven plates, and I'm going to work on eight plates. Um, I just, I'm not looking to waste energy because my knees are warm, everything's warm. I've, I've done hamstring curls, I've done leg presses, like I don't need to waste tons of energy on this. The only time where you may do is if you still have iffy knees, um, and then you might need to get some more blood into them with the leg extension. Um, for me at the moment, my knees are okay, and they're staying okay, touch wood. Um, <clears throat> so, for me, they're all right. First one set for this on me, guys, for this with me, guys. Um, I, I don't, on the first one, go heavy, heavy. So, like on the hamstring curl, it was a, a six to 10 or a five to 10, and the same for my leg press compounds. Um, for this one, even though the goal is absolute strength, I find that my knees will get beat up if I start heavy. So on the first set, I shoot for like eight to 10. Um, this will probably be about eight. 
Um, and then if that feels good, I can go up, but I have to kind of listen to my knees in the moment. But I have numbers in terms of, so I have an eight plate number, I have a nine plate number, I have a 10 plate number. And, I, and I, you'll see at the moment, there's a biscuit on top of the eight plates. So I'm gonna try to progress that based on what I feel good. And then I also have a seven plate number and a six plate number and I could come down. Um, and I also, the, the important thing is that I'll compare session to session. So if I, I'll always have numbers where like, the first set might be eight and then the second set might be 10 plates. Um, then I'm always gonna try to focus on the 10 plate when it cut falls at the second session, the second set. Um, so I'm not then gonna put the 10 plate set third and compare it to the progressions of when it was second set. So again, that's super logical, but I know to maybe guys that are new to training, that you might not think about that. Like eventually you would, because eventually you'd realize, oh, why am I not progressing this set? Oh yeah, because previously I did the third set, or previously I did the second set, and now I'm doing a third. Um, but eventually you would fall on that uh, idea, but if you aren't initially, then compare like for like sets. <clears throat> Second set guys, um, so like I said, my knees actually felt great on that first set, I got 10 reps. So I'm gonna go up for this second set. This is gonna be super low on the reps. And I'll only do this on the days that my knees feel really happy. Um, so if you have bulletproof knees, again, have at those lower reps if you want them. Like fours and fives, they're gonna have great knock-ons to how your tens feel. Um, but for me, I struggle to string together consecutive sessions where my knees are happy um, which isn't a problem because then I just work in a different rep range and then I take it when it's there when it gives it to me I take it today's one of those days so I'm not going to miss the opportunity to take the load in. this is the first set of the day where we're going to make most of the adjustable resistance profile so with that dead stop leg press, as you can imagine, that really trained the lengthened position. Because I went deep and I dead stop down there. It really didn't tax the shortened position. Because when I hit fully looked for lockout, the uh, overload on the muscle at that point is minimal. So that's why when I get on the leg press, I start with bottom peg, as it really overloads the short. It's really hard to get short. And then from there, I adjust the resistance profile as I go down. Um, so, on days when my recovery feels fantastic, I'll do more, like systemically, in terms of the fatigue I'm carrying through the week, um, and week to week, I'll do more quad compound work. Today, I feel pretty tired. Um, I did two hard sessions yesterday, um, and then the same again today. So, when I know that I've got training again tonight, and tonight's a hard sparring session. Um, which, which sounds silly, but I, I have new goals and, and that's just what that is. So in this session here, I'm gonna tick off what I need to do for my current goals. Um, so I advise you to focus on the same. The, your volume requirements are a reflection of your recovery status at the time, and then also your setup. Um, so don't be looking to do more work than what you can recover from. Um, it's, that's going to hold you back dramatically. Because I know that if I pushed with more and more and more work on some of the real hard demanding sets, the new really difficult sets, then I'm going to create too much fatigue to get through all the training sessions that I need to do in the week. And that's important. Like, and when you re relay that to a bodybuilding perspective, if you bury yourself in any one session, you're not gonna to string together progressions across a six month period. We're mid 
tank loaded now, which means that the resistance isn't quite as heavy at the shortened position because I'm not going to be able to get it short now. Um, but the loading is more consistent through the full range of motion. So this is um, this is the peg I like to use once I have done my bottom peg. So with different machines, I utilize different pegs. So with press machines and pull machines that are prime, I never use the bottom peg at all. I, I think it's entirely obsolete. I think it's a useless peg. Whereas with the hamstring curls, I use a little more so, not solely bottom peg, the sun goes on there. And then with the leg extension, that's where I feel like it has a lot of use. Um, again, try different setups and see what you feel. But for me, that's the way that I like to use machines. at the beginning of the leg extension set up there um, based on how my knees feel um, for those of you that do have issues with your, your knees that flare up sometimes and you do have an adjustable resistance profile machine starting on the bottom peg will get your knees warmer much much better um, because there's less loading in the stretch position um, which is where you're going to find you're going to aggravate things the most for the large majority of you that might not be all of you but the majority of you. So then, obviously I did two sets in that overloaded shortened position and then was able to move to the mid peg. I can never start on the mid peg. Like I said, that was a, an eight rep set, whatever it was on that last one. I could never do five plates first set on the leg extension on a mid peg. Even if it's an eight rep set, I can't do it. It's just, it, that will flare my knees instantly. Even if I do a 12 rep set, mid peg to start, that will cause me, me, me knee issue. That will then develop into tendonitis quite quickly. Um, so I've learned that through trial and error. For those of you that followed my stuff, before I had this adjustable resistance profile, I used to band the leg extension. So I'd have very little pin resistance. I'd have loads of band resistance that then kicked in at about a third of the way in, and then obviously peaked or shortened. That replicates the same situation. And then what I would do is, as I would go through the sets, I would remove the band tension, but increase the amount of peg weight. And that's the exact same situation as adjusting the resistance profile. There's videos of that on my Instagram, so you can check that. Or if you're on the members site, come back and look at some of the older content on there, um, and you'll see how to set that up efficiently. Four sets wrapped up on the leg extension. I was able to do four sets because of the adjustable resistance profile. So if I didn't have that option to adjust the resistance profile, I would have only been able to do two sets. Kind of how like a, a previous setup was when I was limited on the kit that we had. Because um, I knew then that you'd exhausted that resistance profile that you're working in. Whereas when you have the adjustable ones, you can accumulate more sets on them. And you don't have to keep jumping from machine to machine, which is then a really efficient way to train because it's just saves so much time because you have less setup. Um, so, because like when you look at a, a training session as a whole, I, I don't look at a training session thinking, okay, I only have, I can only do two sets here, I can only do two sets here. My session is, my thinking is that I have 12 or 14 sets, for example, to use in the session as a whole, and then I'll use those appropriately on pieces of kit that allow me to train in resistance profiles that are ideal for that part of the session. So obviously like we know that we train, we can overload things in the shortened position at the start and lengthen positions at the end. So if you don't have a variety of kit, you might have to change between pieces of kit. You might have to start on a hammer strength machine and then end on some kind of dumbbell variation. That's a logical way to change things. And then you will know that doing more than just two sets on maybe a hammer strength piece is probably silly because you're not gonna be able to keep um, increasing your progression over a period of time because of that limiting factor of training in the shortened range. So that's why it limits you to two sets. But two sets isn't a locked in idea, it's a misconception. So people that think that the idea is just to do two sets on things, it's just because they're confused. 
and they don't necessarily understand the goal of the volume parameters as a whole and then also don't understand the limitations of certain pieces of kit but that's what I'm trying to help that's what I'm trying to explain um, so I am now on the seated hamstring curl and I'm now on setting three which overloads the lengthened portion so this will now be easy to easier to get short because I trained the short range at the beginning and I don't have much oomph left there now so. <laughs> I absolutely love that machine on setting three. I love it. It's it's so heavy at the start and it's really hard to get going and then it feels like it drops off at the perfect point. Like me and Corin were actually discussing this machine the other day and that we actually think that this, quite like my opinions on the chest press machine, that even in just all setting one actually runs you into a bit of a progression wall with the fact that setting one is still really heavy in the short. When I was on gear, I could overcome it because it was so explosive that I could generate so much force at the lengthened that I could then get things short regardless. Now I don't have that explosiveness. I can't do it. So for me, if I was to start on this piece, I would start on setting five, which is then like how I did on the chest piece, which is then kind of half mid, half lengthened, and then I'd move to setting three. So that's a, an idea for you. So for me on this, settings two and four, are again entirely redundant because they have no resistance to their length and portion at all. You're just flapping about. Um, why I like the line ham in the shortened position is because you don't have to necessarily leave the lengthened or the mid portion of the range flapping about with zero resistance. What it's like is that you can appropriately load that, but then as you get into the shortened range, have some weight there so then it stays hard to lock out there. Um, which makes a lot more sense. That's quite, I know that's quite complicated, but um, we'll kind of explain that more as we go. So with this now, uh, that was four reps. And then lower the weight for one more set. And then that's, that's my hamstrings done. That's five sets of leg curl, um, which is more than enough. Probably it's, so just to explain my kind of volume distribution at the moment, I, 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 I want to do quite a lot of leg curl work, just for me specifically, because that is in line with my goals. Um, so bias your volume between quads and hams based on your needs in terms of their strengths and weaknesses. So quite simple is, if you've got really great hams, do a little bit more quad volume. If you've got really quite great uh, quads, do a little bit more ham volume. It's literally as simple as that. Okay, so slightly lower. Wait now, guys, and just a couple more reps. Guys, after that, I, st I like to do a single leg movement. Um, that again, exhaust training in the length and range just entirely. For a bodybuilding perspective, I'd probably choose uh, a front foot elevated split squat um, with the rear foot elevated as well. For a knee health perspective, for those of you that are struggling there, I would choose just a front foot elevated with no rear foot elevated and then just look for as much range of motion over the knee as possible and then for those that are looking for more glute ham focus i would do the single leg step up for me with my goals at the moment i want to develop as much power and strength through my glute ham specifically my glute for this movement actually um, i'm going to choose to step up um, that's just again, very specific to my goals. So pick the movement that is gonna be most beneficial for you. I would say the large majority are gonna favor the single leg rear elevated split squat. I, I think that that is, when uh, quad hypertrophy is the goal, I think that that's a phenomenal, phenomenal exercise. Guys, for me, um, I'm gonna uh, do body weight for these and just crank out the reps and then because um, I've just reintroduced these because I've had a couple of sessions where I was doing more some knee health focused ones and then um, I did actually do the split, uh, the heel elevated split squat as well. Um, so I think it's maybe been six weeks since I've done this specific version 
But um, the reason why I stopped doing this one was because holding the dumbbells was causing me forearm problems. Because um, I don't know for those of you that follow my log, but I ran into some forearm tendonitis issues. So I, uh, I scrapped the dumbbell variation. So I'm going to start back on this with just body weight. And then over the coming weeks, I'll rebuild back up to the weight I was lifting for heavy, weight, heavy reps. So last movement for me today, guys, is gonna be a, a lying single leg raise that is hip flexor and then also brings in some abdominal work. So when we focus on the layout of this session as a whole, so let's just kind of recap. And I'm gonna put this in a way that how I would advise you to do it for maximum muscle growth. So we're looking at two to three sets of a leg curl to start with, focusing on training in the shortened range. So if you don't have a machine that already biases the shortened range, you can spend two seconds in that contracted position like we did with the cuff laterals in push. If you haven't watched that, watch that push session. And then as those sets go on, you can then just do like a one second and then a zero. So those could be your, your two to three sets there. And then after that, once your knees are warm, you're gonna do a leg compound movement. And again, depending on how things feel, you could do two sets on one piece or even four sets on one piece and then just altering your rep ranges because those machines have like fairly even resistance in the sense that 
you're not gonna, you're going to be able to work consistently for four sets. So what tends to diminish working sets is when things overload in the short end, because then you just run into a brick wall. I keep using that analogy a lot because it's quite literal in the sense that you then just cannot lock out. Whereas on a leg press or a hack squat, you're not going to run into that issue. So you could then do two to four sets. Um, my preference really would be to be doing two different movements, like one leg press variation and then one squat variation, so hack or pendulum. Or if you are an individual that is able to use the barbell squat to your advantage, then you would use the barbell squat. If you need to alter the biomechanics for that, then you could add a heel wedge. So then after our four sets of compound move, we're then gonna jump onto a leg extension. If you don't have something where it allows you to adjust the resistance profile, use bands. Use bands and low pin weight. If you scroll back through my IG, you can see it. Um, there's a video of tons of bands on a leg extension. And then again, two to four sets here, depending on how that shortened position feels. If you get your loading positions right, you could do two with quite heavy resistance in the lockout and then bring that resistance off. And then on the fourth set, you have no resistance there at all. So again, this is where we kind of demolish the idea of it only being two sets on a movement and us actually adjusting resistance profiles to stay on one piece of kit. After that, we're going to hop back onto a leg curl that allows us to train in the lengthened range. So this is where you do need a piece of kit that drops off in the shortened range. If you don't have that, you can do a hyperextension and then just spend one second in the full stretched position. Okay, so after our lengthened hamstring movement, be it hyperextension or a hamstring curl that drops off, we're then gonna do a single leg movement. And again, for this, pick your single leg movement that is going to allow you to target the areas that you need the most focus. So for me right now, because of my personal goals, I'm choosing the single leg box step up where I'm not really controlling the eccentric and I'm just focused on powering up with one leg because that is super specific to my needs. If my needs were still, I, I, I never did this movement whilst I was trying to bodybuild. It's important for me to put that in because it's not particularly a great muscle building exercise. It's okay, but when you don't have that eccentric loading, I don't think it's as optimal. Um, and there's a lot of things doing the work. There's a lot of ability to create inertia, to rock yourself forward. But for my goals, it's absolutely perfect. Um, so if you have sports specific goals, that's your movement. For those of you that are looking to, to grow muscles, I would pick a different exercise. I would pick something that's either, again, glute focused in the lengthened position. So you could choose a dumbbell RDL and pause in the lengthened position, or something that's hamstring focused, sorry, so it's quad focused in the lengthened position. So it could be a heel elevated split squat. And then to finish, we're gonna finish off with a hip adductor, sorry, a hip uh, flexor exercise where we're then just doing a lying single leg raise. And again, that's gonna pull in some of your abdominal muscles as well. That's my ideal setup for a leg day. Now, depending on your stances you take, you might be an individual that is naturally adductor biased, which means that you don't need to add in an adductor isolation work. For those of you that aren't, I then would be hammering the adductor machine. Now for me, there was a large period where I actually started my sessions with this. So I would do adductor, then hamstring curl before my compound. And then there were also periods where I ended with it. If you are an individual that takes a stance that is your power position, that already trains your adductors extremely efficiently, you don't need to add the adductor machine. Now I can think of various bodybuilders that are super well developed there already. It's not necessary. So again, make that decision based on your structure. And you're gonna better work this out quite quickly. Look down, look in the mirror and be like, do I have naturally good adductors from the compound movements that I do? If you don't, on the adductor machine. And again, two sets there. If you have something that adjusts the resistance profile and that your recovery capabilities are really good, you could extend those sets to potentially even up to four based on how good your recovery is at that moment in time. So we have quite a lot of variability on the amount of volume that we can do. And hopefully within this session, I've also kind of dispelled the idea of you only needing to do two sets on things. And also that they only need to be a load and a back off. Like those were never things that were set in stone. And they were just misconceptions that were that brought about just because I had to jump from different pieces of kit. Whereas now that we do have all the stuff with the adjusted resistance profile, I can do my work on one piece, which is a huge advantage. Um, again, Prime has had tons of plugging, but I'm seeing other companies now jumping on the bandwagon because they understand the importance of it. Like for me now, if you're a kit manufacturer in 2022 and you're making a new piece of kit and you don't have something that is 
an adjust adjustable resistance profile and then for like a chess piece if it doesn't converge and if it doesn't have um, handles that are potentially adjustable you have no idea what you're doing when it comes to making kit and you should not be making kit whereas a lot of this stuff now has that much flexibility and it's it's superb it's gonna it's gonna build much 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 better physiques but primes are way ahead of the curve with it all um so again i'd, I'd look at their stuff and, and i'm not i i swear to you guys i i get absolutely no kickbacks whatsoever i'm not looking for kickbacks I'm just looking to put out the information to you guys of what's good. And if someone else comes along and makes a good kit that's on par, then they're going to get the plug. It's as simple as that. So I'm just putting out this good, the, uh, the good information for you. Um, so last couple sets for me on the leg raise, and then that's me out. Any questions, please ask. Any questions that kind of I can help you program your leg session specific to you, please ask, but you're going to need to outline your strengths, your weaknesses, your pieces of kit that are available to you, and then I can help give you some ideas. Remember, everything is about you. And remember that the, the answer for a lot of these questions is try it and see, and then you tell me. You give me, you do something for a period of time, and then you give me some feedback, and then we can have a discussion about it, instead of me giving you permission. That's what we're going to ban. That is just, we're getting rid of that idea. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys.